before we eat, they're going to give the same prayer. Pray they're going to give. So Lord, thank you for this food we are about to receive. Have you ever noticed you don't pray under God the grace after the food? You pray before you eat it. I want you right where you are. Would you just bow your heads and say out loud, Lord, thank you for this food. We are about to receive. Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. I want us to consider verses 16, 17, 18, and then 19. And Pharaoh said to the midwives, when you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it's a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not know what the king of Egypt had told them to do. So they let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, why have you done this? Why did you let the boys live? The midwives answered Pharaoh, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are vigorous and they give birth before assistance shows up. You may be seated. And Pharaoh said to the midwives, if you're helping Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that baby is a boy, kill him. If it is a girl, let her live. I want you to arm yourself with a writing instrument. I want you to power up uh, your uh, iPads. I said you'll go to the note-taking section of your smartphone. Some critical points and information that I want to share with you on today that I believe is going to empower and impact you long after this worship encounter would have concluded. I want to preach for a little while today using as a subject, he blocked the abortion. He blocked the abortion. In the follow-up to the groundbreaking New York Times bestseller book, Freakonomics, that gave curious oddities and insights about the economy. And in their third installment entitled Think Like a Freak, it endeavors to retain the re- reader, retrain the reader's brain to understand the economy from a different angle. One compelling portion was understanding the rise and fall of violent crime in America. In the 60s, it seemed to skyrocket. In the 80s, it doubled. And in the 90s, it began to go through the roof. And then in the 21st century, it began to plummet. Variables were examined by the authors trying to understand why it is that violent crime in America began to fade. They examined tighter gun laws, the decline of crack cocaine on the market, or even the filling of the industrialized prison complex. They eerily concluded it was not from gun laws because most violent crimes are committed by weapons that are not registered. They knew it was not attributable, hear me very carefully, to the surge or even the evaporation of crack cocaine, that while it is that they have stockpiled black bodies in prisons, 
Most of the black men who are in jail are in jail for nonviolent offenses. In the history of America, there's only been one black serial killer. All else have been of a Caucasian persuasion. And so they were a little bit miffed as to why it is that violent crime in America was going away. The authors offered a theory that hasn't been widely accepted, yet deserves our critical examination. And they would suggest, ladies and gentlemen, that violent crime in America went down, hear me, after the legalization of abortion. Their logic followed that after 1973, with the passing of Roe versus Wade, that in fact began to push a rise in abortions, which meant that fewer unwanted children were being born, which in turn equated to fewer children growing up in difficult and dire circumstances that would lend itself to criminal activity. We cannot, ladies and gentlemen, as much of the black church has done, we cannot in ignore the impact of abortion on the black community. More often than not, most of us in all of our days in church have never heard a message about abortion in church under the prism of the gospel. It is interesting for you to note, and I want you to please hear this. In 2009, would you write this down? In 2009, 286, 623 African Americans died. Write that down, please. In 2009, 286, 623 African Americans died. That same year, watch this, there were 1.2 million abortions. I'm talking about the United States. In 2009, there were 1.2 million abortions in the United States. This is going to blow your mind, clutch your pearls. 35% of them were by black women. So if you do your math in basic math, that means in 2009, there were 420,000 black babies aborted. Are you all hearing me? That means if there were 420,000 black babies aborted in 2009, more black people were killed in abortion than any other cause. More than cancer, more than homicide, more than gang initiation. Watch this. That means at our own hands, it was double the deaths. African Americans account for three times as many abortions than any other ethnicity in the nation. There are estimated, please hear me. They are estimated that every day in America, every day in America, 3,315 abortions take place. You all didn't hear what I said. Every day in the continental United States of America, 3,315 abortions are preceded. Of that 3,315, 1,207 are black. I hope you're getting this. Since 1973, every person in the room who was born post-1973, would you please stand right where you are? If you were born after 1973, I want you to stand for just one moment. Everybody, please look around. You were born after 1973. Please look around. I want you to see them. I want you to remember them. And I want you to hold on to what I'm getting ready to tell you. If you were born, here it is, after 1973, you ought to be standing. You 
may be seated. Watch this. Doug, when I found this out, I was absolutely mind blown. I want you to write this down, church. Since 1973, there have been 17 million black babies aborted. Since 1973, 17 million black babies have been aborted. Now, it is because of our number of abortions, watch this, 17 million, it is because of our number of abortions that Hispanics are now the largest minority. If you add those 17 million to the Census Bureau, watch this, they do not eclipse us. The birth rate of Hispanics in 2014 mirror the birth rate of black people in 73. So it is not that they are having more babies, it's that they're keeping them. It's important for you to ponder, watch this. It's important for you to ponder the majority of Planned Parenthood abortion clinics are in black communities. Say with me. Margaret Sanger, S-A-N-G-E-R. Would you write that name down? Margaret Sanger is the founder of Planned Parenthood. She wrote a letter in 1939 that they just found last year. She wrote a letter in 1939, Margaret Sanger did, wrote this letter in 1939, the founder of Planned Parenthood. She wrote in a letter to a dear girlfriend of hers when starting the Planned Parenthood Center, we don't want word to get out, but our plan is to exterminate the Negro race. At that time, ladies and gentlemen, in 1939, the Planned Parenthood Center was in fact utilized to sterilize black women. It was not until the passage of Roe versus Wade that they shifted from sterilization to abortion. Have you not noted in all of your years of life, you have never had a church Raise an offering for Planned Parenthood. You've never heard a sorority of Deltas, AKAs, Zetas ever give a donation to Planned Parenthood. I want to ask you with a critical mind. If in fact African American women are in fact the lead customers, who's paying for it? Who's paying for it and why are they paying and not looking for credit? What's in it for them for seeing 17 million black babies die? Because they want it to be easier for you? Because it was an accident? Because it's not what you planned? Because you ain't ready right now. Who had it in their mind? Kill black babies. 